for almost 2000 pages of Blender tips, get the Blender Secrets ebook on Gumroad. The free add-on M3 lets you make trees with nodes. Despite there being a newer version of M3, it currently still works best and has the most functions in its older Blender 2.8 incarnation. It also works better in Blender 2.8, so I recommend that you download the portable version of Blender 2.83.2 to create your trees. After creating your trees, you can always append them into a new scene in whatever later version of Blender you happen to be using. For the recommended versions of M3 and Blender, check the links in the description. The correct file to install should be called Modular Tree Blender 2.8. In Preferences, after installing the add-on, search for Tree and then enable Add Mesh M3. It has its own editor type window called M3 Node Tree. Click on New in that window, then press Shift A and add a trunk node as well as a branch node. Connect them, then add a tree parameter node. Click on Create Tree. Check Auto Update so the tree will update in the viewport when you change any values. Be careful with resolution. This is a value that can freeze Blender if you set it too high. Randomness makes it look more special. There is even a checkbox to create an armature for the tree so you can animate it. Add a twig node and click Execute to make a twig with leaves. If you change any twig values, you won't see the changes until you click on Execute again. Check Create Leaves and pick the leaves object in the viewport to add them to your tree. After clicking on New in the M3 Node Tree window, you can open the M3 tab and choose a preset. Click on Load Preset and then on Create Tree on the Tree Parameters node. This is the Old Oak preset. I've added a Roots node as well to make it more realistic. If the branches don't really connect to the trunk, you can set their output to Final. If you create a twig and go into Material View, you'll see that it already has a material. You can choose from three preset materials in the node under Leaf Type. The twigs are distributed with a normal particle system. So you can randomize the scale, for example. To add a material to the trunk, click on Append Materials with the trunk selected. Then in the Materials tab, you can choose a material from the drop-down menu. With your tree created, enable Auto Update. Set it to Final. Otherwise, the next step doesn't work. And check Create Armature. Set Armature Min Radius to 0.00. .00. Click on Update Tree. The tree is automatically weight painted and parented to the armature. In Pose Mode, you can animate the tree branches manually if you want. However, there is a faster way to animate the tree. With the armature selected, press F3 and search for Fast Wind. If you press the spacebar to play the timeline, you'll notice that the tree gently moves, as if by the wind. You can open the Fast Wind options and increase the strength and speed as needed. Notice that the leaves don't move with the tree. To solve this, add an armature modifier to the leaves. Place it above the particle system and check Bone Envelopes. Then, as the object, choose the tree rig.
Another way to create an animated tree is the sapling add-on that comes with Blender. Enable the add-on in Preferences, press Shift-A and choose Curve Sapling Tree Gen. If you accidentally close the settings, you can bring them back by pressing F9. Sapling comes with presets and there are a lot of settings that you can customize. For leaves, go to the Leaves settings and check Show Leaves. You can choose a preset leaf shape and choose Object and in combination with Duplifert, choose a leaf that you've modeled yourself. Creating animation with Sapling is super easy. First, you go to Armature settings and check the Use Armature box. Then go to the Animation settings and check the Armature animation as well as the Leaf animation boxes. When changing these settings, check the Fast Preview box. This shows the tree as sticks, so it plays more smoothly and you can see better what you're doing when changing the values. You can edit the values for the trunk and the leaves separately. If you want more control over what your tree looks like, instead of using the sapling or mTree add-ons, you can use the following techniques to make a fully custom tree. In edit mode, press M and merge the default cube to one vertex. Make sure you're in vertex selection mode, then press A to make sure the vertex is selected. Press E to extrude it and then create some branches. Rotate the view occasionally while you do this. In object mode, add a skin modifier. Go back to edit mode and press A to select all vertices, then press Ctrl A and drag the mouse. This changes the weight of the vertices. You can also do this for individual vertices and use proportional editing. It's easier to select individual vertices in wireframe mode. Extrude some more vertices to create more branches and to make the tree look more interesting. With proportional editing enabled, you can scale the last extruded vertex of a branch to create a tapered look for each new branch. Duplicate and scale the trunk a few times to create some twigs. In edit mode, remove some vertices and extrude new ones to make the twigs unique. Select the original trunk in edit mode, press A and then right click and choose subdivide. Right click again and choose smooth vertices. Press shift R a few times to repeat the smoothing action. Apply the skin modifier. Go to weight paint mode, lower the strength and uncheck front faces only. Weight paint the trunk to indicate where the twigs should and shouldn't be distributed. Select the twigs in object mode, press M and add them to a new collection. Create an advanced hair particle system for the trunk and lower the particle count. To render the particles, choose the twigs collection. Under Vertex Group Density, choose the Weight Painted Group. Enable Rotation and set the axis to Normal. Randomize the rotation and change the seed value until you get something that you like. Having made the trunk and the twigs, let's also add some leaves. Convert the particle system and remove it. Use the Images as Planes add-on to import a leaf image with an alpha channel. You can add some loop cuts and give the leaf a minimal amount of bending. If you don't want to use transparency, you can press K for the knife tool and cut out the leaf shape. Select the vertex at the base of the leaf and press Shift S, then choose Cursor to select it. Then in Object Mode, go to Object, Origin, Origin to 3D Cursor. Select all the twigs and press Ctrl-J to join them. Then apply the skin modifier. Add an advanced hair particle system to the twigs. Use the leaf object to render the particles and randomize the location.
The downside of using an add-on like M-Tree or Sapling is that they don't add a convincing trunk to the bottom of the tree. This is where photogrammetry comes in handy. Take photos of a tree and turn them into a 3D model using your favorite photogrammetry app. I personally like Reality Capture, but for a free alternative, you can also use Meshroom. In Blender, add a cylinder with radius of 0.5 meters and depth 3.15 meters. Choose Cap Fill Type, nothing. Right click and choose Shade Smooth. Give it a new material. Switch to Cycles so you can have the Bake options and use these settings. Add a new image texture node. Click on New to create a new texture, then increase the resolution and give it a name. You don't need to connect the node. Select the 3D scan. Then, holding Shift, select the cylinder as well, and then click on Bake. Now you have a nice square texture that you can use for the rest of the tree. Create a procedural tree using M-Tree or Sapling and give it a material with the baked texture. Use box mapping with object-based texture coordinates driven by an empty. The scale of the empty controls the mapping scale of the texture. Using proportional editing in edit mode, make the two separate models overlap better. Add the box mapped baked texture to the material of the 3D scan with a mix shader. Then use a gradient texture to fade from the 3D scan texture to the box mapped texture. Here you can see the difference the gradient makes. Combining what we've learned so far about mixing photogrammetry trunks and creating custom modeled trees, we can create an even better tree. First, create another tree trunk using photogrammetry. Add any primitive mesh in object mode. In edit mode, press A to select all, then X to delete everything. Holding Ctrl, right click to create vertices where you want to create tree trunks. Extrude some branches by selecting vertices and pressing E. By rotating the view each time, you avoid making the tree too flat. Add a skin modifier. Select the first vertex in each mesh island and click Mark Root. You can change the thickness by selecting vertices and pressing Ctrl A. You can use proportional editing here as well. Set it to smooth shading and add a subdivision modifier. Using the process described previously, add a material and merge the trunks with the photogrammetry base. We can still get some benefit from the add-ons we looked at before. You can use a twig node from the M3 add-on to generate twigs with leaves for use in a particle system. Now that we know how to make realistic looking trees, let's also look at a more stylized version. Press Shift A and add a blank grease pencil object. Switch to draw mode and set stroke placement to stroke. Now the lines you draw will snap to existing lines. Another thing that's important is the viewing angle. With these two things in mind, you can confidently place strokes in 3D space. In object mode, select the grease pencil object. Go to Object, Convert, Path to convert it to a path. Select this new path object in the outliner. You can give it depth, increase the resolution, and fill caps. In edit mode, using proportional editing, you can select vertices and scale them up with Alt S. Go to Object, Convert, Mesh to convert the path to a mesh. Add 
add a remesh modifier to the objects. Decrease voxel size carefully and incrementally. Using proportional editing with connected only enabled, you can close some gaps. Press Ctrl A and choose Visual Geometry to mesh. Go to Sculpt Mode and enable Tin Topo. Choose Constant Detail and sample the current resolution of the mesh. Double the sampled value as the starting value for sculpting. Using the Clay Strips brush, you can quickly add volume. Hold Ctrl to invert the brush and hold Shift to enable the Smooth brush. Under Advanced in the Brush Settings, enable Front Faces Only. That way you don't accidentally destroy thin objects. The Draw Sharp brush can also be useful for creating organic shapes. Modeling something organic like a tree is a good way to start with 3D sculpting. Now that we know many ways of making trees, let's make a whole forest. Convert and remove any particle system that you have on your tree and join everything together so the tree is one object. Move the tree to the side and create a terrain for the trees using the Ant Landscape add-on. Add a particle system to the landscape, set it to Hair and check Advanced. Set it to 1 at first, render as object and choose the tree. Check Object Rotation as well as Rotation. You may need to rotate the original tree. 90 degrees on the Y axis in my example. As soon as you see that your one tree is rotated correctly on the landscape, set the viewport display of the original tree to Bounce. Now you can safely increase the number of particles. Increase the face and randomize face values to create some random rotations. Similarly, increase the scale randomness. It may not look like much in the viewport, but when you press F12 to render, you get a dense forest. If you found this topic interesting and would like to know more, don't forget that you can find it in my Blender Secrets ebook along with almost 2000 pages of other tips. To get an idea of what the ebook is like, you can download the free sample from my website.